Painting casts is a long-lived tradition in academic drawing, but truth be told, I've actually never done one. Luckily, I met a sculptor named Thor Larsen, and I had the chance to visit his historic, beautiful studio in Florence. I really fell in love with the beautiful sculptures, casts, and knickknacks that he had around the studio, so I couldn't resist painting it from life for four days. Particularly, I fell in love with this cast of St. Andrew, which you see behind me. And you can actually get one of your own at thorlarsen.net for your academic studies. Anyways, guys, let's get started with the video, but don't forget to hit like and subscribe because I've been told it helps me somehow, so let's do that. All right, let's go. Here's what I'm looking at as I paint. I'm painting this from life, but you're seeing a photo, so unfortunately you can't see all the colors that I see. The first order of business is to mark the top and the bottom, which will be the boundaries of where I want my cast to start and end. Let's start with taking some measurements. I've discovered that the mouth is about halfway down the cast and the width of it is a little bit longer than one half. You measure this by putting your hand directly in front of you and using your brush to take these measurements. So now I'm just looking for the halfway mark between my boundaries, which is where the mouth will be. And here I'm putting the width. So I just get to drawing right away. In a more academic setting, people would make this drawing a lot more carefully and slowly and take a lot of measurements. I only took two. This is because I'm just doing a four and a half hour a la prima live sketch. So if you want to do a long effort, I recommend taking as many measurements as you can. What I would like to show you now is how I stain the canvas at the early stages of my work. What I like to do is to put down too much paint with a ton of Gamsol that's thinning it. And as you can see, it's too dark when I put it down. But that's okay because the plan is to wipe it with a rag. And as you spread it around with all the Gamsol, this paint thins and it goes inside the texture of your canvas. And I find that that look is perfect for the first layer of my background. Okay, now that that's done, it's time to start the stain. If you've seen my videos before, you know that I like to start with these thinned out Gamsol washes. You can see me using a big brush to spread around the very thin paint that will serve as the underpainting under my opaque paint later on. Because of how I set up the lighting, all the little crevices in the cast are actually quite obvious, so I'm taking note of them in my underpainting so that I know where to place them when I'm doing the opaque work later on. So here's the finished underpainting stage. This is what we call a color abosh. Time for some opaque painting. At this stage, I wanna try and lay down as much thick paint as possible early on, because when I go to finesse all the edges later on, I find that I take a lot of the paint off by working on top of these layers. For some reason, I actually started with the half tones, which is not advisable. It kinda makes more sense to start with the shadow, the darkest darks, and the lights, the lightest lights. But I saw a lot of color in those half tones. I was seeing a cool green and I just wanted to note it down right away. So you can see me putting some very thick paint early on. I'm keeping in mind that the light is coming from below and to the right as I paint in the opaque stage. And I'm making sure that the darks that are in the light are not so dark that they match the darks in the shadow side. You can see me using a very old bristle brush to soften the form on things. And I love it because it gives this hairy texture because of how destroyed it is. I know that I want the beard to be a lot less rendered than the face. So a lot of these strokes that I'm putting down in the early stage might actually survive to the finished painting. And I kind of know that ahead of time. So I'm being careful and making sure to put down a lot of paint. Well, it's time for some palette knife. I always find that backgrounds benefit from a little bit of palette knife action. In fact, if you're brave, you could even integrate palette knife into the figure, but I'm not such a person, so I haven't quite gotten there yet. So usually you can find me doing it in the background like you see here. The reason why I'm spending time now painting the wall behind the cast 
is to make sure to note down the fact that it's a much colder white color than the cast is itself. So here you can see what I'm looking at side by side with my painting and I'm seeing kind of a firm edge within the shadow. So I'm noting that down now. I'm squinting as I paint this to look for those edges. When you squint, what you see remaining are the firmer and the sharper edges and the softer edges, they just kind of dissipate away. I'm seeing that happen a lot with the light side as it goes against the wall. So in my painting, I keep it very soft up until even the end. So here are the results of stage two, which is when we covered the entire painting with opaque paint and we captured the sense of light, but no details. And now we're starting to render form and render details. What's fascinating is that the sense of light and simplicity you capture in that opaque stage sometimes feels stronger and even more lifelike than when you render everything out like I'm doing now. So you're going to see me add a lot of forms and subforms, particularly in the lit side on the right. I feel like although it becomes more realistic, it almost detracts from the sense and the feeling for the light itself. But that's just how it goes. I'm going to use that gnarly bristle brush again that has that texture that it gives that I like to pull forms from because it has this soft hairy edge that I find just perfect. But unfortunately at this stage this brush won't last a long time like this as the bristles wear down from overuse. As you work on the shadow side to add some little subforms here and there, you got to make sure that the values stay in the shadow value family and don't jump into the light value family or else it will become confusing you lose the sense of the light that is most important to the painting. Just working little forms here and there. It feels like I haven't jumped into the lit side yet because I like how simple it is and how it has no information, but eventually I'll have to cave and note down more of the subforms there. Getting the bridge of the nose to come out of the head correctly is a tough one for me. So now I'm adding some information to the lit side while trying to make sure that the darks there don't go as dark as in the shadow family. Be careful not to overstate the darks in that eye that's inside the light because then it will destroy the sense of it. I feel like I did that a little bit to some degree. So now you see me going back in and adding some lighter values to bring that eye back into the light family as much as I can. Okay, that looks much better, I think. You have to resist the temptation to make that eye too specific. In real life, we can't see it well, so paint it the same way too. Now I'm just adding some thick paint to the background to give the background a little bit of character and a little bit of fun here and there. I don't really know what I'm doing now because I don't see any differences from anything I do. Now that I've finished rendering the face, it's time to finish rendering the beard, but I gotta live up to my promise of not making it too detailed. Here's a stroke that I really enjoyed. Kind of has a sharp edge on the left that may be a little bit too sharp, but we gotta keep this section less rendered and more loose than the head because it's less important. Just applying some form with my bristle brush that's providing a perfect texture for some loose painting. Well, I'm pretty much done and now I'm just doing God knows what. Just messing things up. I think I was very hungry at this point. So just doing some crazy stuff. I felt that this thinned out shadow from the first to Bosch stage had a little bit too much of lizard and crimson in it. I look too cold red, so I'm adding some greenish tint into it so it doesn't jump out as much. By the way, take notice that pretty much my entire shadow side still consists of only thinned out paint that I thinned with Gamsol during my Bosch stage. And I find thin shadows look great with opaque lights. I did that in the nose as well, in the nose shadow. So here's the finished painting and I'm gonna pull in to show you some textures. So you can see the texture of the canvas in the shadow side 
and my bristle brush helped make those hairy marks in the shadows that I kept. And then the lid side has a lot more thick texture. But yeah, this was fun. It took about four and a half hours to do, maybe four hours and 45 minutes. And let's review how it went. Here was the measurements I've taken on the cast, and here's my painting. It looks like I nailed the measurements, and the only thing that's a little bit off is that the nose arch didn't match that of the cast. But for four and a half hours, I guess that's pretty much all you can do. So I had a lot of fun with this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit subscribe and like. If you guys want a copy of this cast, then you should go to thorlarson.net, link in the description to get your own.